The Teaching Privacy Project aims to explain how online privacy works. On our website, teachingprivacy.org, you will find 10 principles for protecting your online privacy. Our next principle is, identity is not guaranteed on the internet. When you walk around a city, buy something in a supermarket, or invite someone into your house to fix the leaking shower, you automatically assess the intentions of the people you see or interact with, including whether they are who they seem to be. Most of the time this happens subconsciously, and you might just have a feeling of trust or distrust towards a given person. This is your brain telling you whether you need to be careful in that situation. It's pretty amazing that evolution has equipped us with this trust radar. For example, walking into the local branch of your bank, you're immediately sure that you can safely hand over money to be deposited into your account. Similarly, it's totally normal to go into the post office to mail a birthday present to your sweetheart, trusting that the person behind the counter will not open the package. You wouldn't think twice about the legitimacy of these places, or the tellers or clerks there. This is because many clues tell you that this is the bank or post office. To start with, it's where it's always been, and it looks like it always has. But even if you're going in for the first time, you can tell that it's trustworthy because it looks and feels like other banks or post offices. And after all, maintaining a physical building takes money and commitment. Similarly, you can easily tell whether a person you meet on the street is one of your friends. The face, build, and body language match what you expect. The way the person dresses and behaves, and the sound of their voice, are all familiar and quickly recognizable. Unless perhaps they're identical twins, it would be pretty hard for anyone to imitate all that detail to perfection. In all these situations, there's a lot of information available to you in the context, helping you intuitively decide who to trust. Now, imagine doing all these things online. You get an email from your bank, offering a bonus if you open a new savings account. You click on a link that seems to take you to the bank's website, and it asks you for your username and password. What clues can you use to make sure that you're really at your bank's website, and not a fake site? The website might have the proper logos and look like what you remember, but actually, anyone can easily copy the graphics from the real website. The URL may look like what you remember, but even that can be faked. Ultimately, it's hard to absolutely guarantee you're in the right place. This type of email scam is called phishing, and it's very common. Next, you want to send birthday greetings in an email. You need an internet connection to transport your note from your device to your sweetheart's. In your Wi-Fi connection list, there are several open Wi-Fi's, one of which has the name of the coffee shop you're in. But how can you know whether it is indeed offered by the coffee shop owner? The sneaky upstairs neighbor could name their Wi-Fi network Java and Jelly Beans just as easily. Now, imagine you log into Linkbook Plus and see that you have a message from your friend. She says she is traveling and had her wallet and phone stolen and urgently needs you to send money. How can you be sure it's actually your friend and not someone who guessed her password and is using her account to trick people into sending money? One obvious clue could be if the message doesn't sound like her usual style. But in the worst case, a really dedicated hacker might copy your friend's writing style, even using the same abbreviations and emojis. In other words, on the internet, it's much more difficult to verify the identity of a person or organization. Without the many clues we use in offline interactions, our subconscious trust radar can fail. However, you can still protect yourself by always being alert and looking for additional information. How do you do that? Use your imagination. Always ask yourself whether an online identity matches the physical person, based on their behavior, way of speaking, and knowledge of shared experiences. If something feels wrong, don't trust that the online identity is who they say they are. If you're unsure, try contacting the person by some other means. For example, try to call your friend to find out if she really is in need of help in a faraway country, or whether her phone and wallet are safely in her pocket. If something sounds too good to be true, like the prince of a faraway country wanting to give you a large sum of money for a small favor? It probably is. Be cautious and suspicious, and use your best judgment. Keep account information secure. If you're using a web browser, check that the URL for any website you log into 
has a closed padlock symbol in front of it. It's harder to tell whether an app uses a secure connection, so avoid using apps for sensitive information, especially when you're on an unknown Wi-Fi network. Use strong passwords, and different ones for different sites. If you're worried about remembering passwords on many different websites, use a password manager. Password managers only require you to memorize one single password, which they use to protect all your other passwords. Also keep credit card numbers, birthdays, social security numbers, and other information that's frequently used to verify identity private. Check the facts. Be very wary if anyone asks you for identifying information or an account password by phone, email, or instant message. Most legitimate services would never contact you out of the blue and demand that you verify your identity in this way. Don't respond to the caller on the phone or reply to the message, and don't click any links. For example, if you get an email that says it's from your bank and it tells you your account has been hacked and they need your password to fix it, call or contact their customer service using the contact information on the bank's public website. In fact, anytime you're not sure whether a link in an email, instant message, or website post leads to a bank or company's actual website, don't click on it. Instead, search for the company using a search engine. A well-known company's actual website is likely to appear much higher up in search results than a fake one. If you're signing up for a new app or service, or buying something from an unfamiliar company, do a quick search for the name first to make sure it's legitimate. If it's not legitimate, an alert will often turn up in the top search results. In the end, identity isn't guaranteed on the internet, but you can protect yourself by keeping in mind that the assumptions you make about identities in the offline world don't work online. Staying on the lookout for things that seem out of place, and taking steps to verify the identities of the individuals and organizations you communicate with.